In this video, I'm going to be showing you everything you need to know about cloud rendering in Revit. I'm going to be showing you how you can render still images, panoramas, how you can run solar studies, create turntables and illuminance. These are going to be outputs for images as well as video. Let's go. Now quickly, before we jump into Revit, I would just like to ask you to check out my website, BalkanArctic.com. I'm going to link it up in the cards above and then also down in the description of this video. If you're serious about learning Revit, that's definitely the best place to be with over 140 hours dedicated to all of the interesting and complex topics inside of Revit. Now, without any further ado, let's jump straight into Revit. And here in Revit, before we start with all of the tools and steps, uh, first I would like to talk about the difference between rendering in Revit and Revit LT. So Revit LT is like a light version of Revit and we only have cloud rendering for Revit LT. For regular Revit, we have in software rendering. Now, even though this is a cloud rendering tutorial, I will be showing you how to create a test rendering inside of Revit. So this is only available if you have the full version of Revit. If you have Revit LT, you can't really do these test renderings inside of your Revit or on your computer. You have to render everything on cloud, even these test renderings. Okay, so now uh, let's get started. And to get us started, first we need to go through a pre-render checklist. What I consider a pre-render checklist is one, you need to make sure that everything is in place and positioned correctly. Then the second thing is we need to see all of the materials and make sure that they look exactly how they should. And finally, we want to make sure that the lighting sources have been adjusted correctly. Now we can get started with the rendering. First, you want to make sure that nothing is selected in the view. And then in the properties panel, we're going to get the view properties. Here, you want to find the camera options and we have the rendering settings dialog here. Click on edit and here we can set up the lighting scheme. Uh, this is basically to make sure that you tell Revit, are, is this an interior or exterior rendering? And is it a daylight rendering with sun or is it a nighttime rendering with perhaps only artificial lighting? Then we have the sun settings, which we can adjust. And we also have the background with options of using multiple sky versions or using an image or even a transparent background. Under image, we have the adjust exposure options, but this is something that we're going to be setting up a bit later on. So we're not going to be changing this here. So with all of the settings completed, the next step is to run a test rendering if you want on your own machine. I prefer to do this. So you just open rendering, RR is the shortcut, and then you can run a quick draft rendering just to see if everything looks okay. Once this is done, now it's time for the actual cloud rendering. So go to rendering cloud, then click continue. And here in the rendering cloud dialog, first, we need to pick out the 3D view, you can either render all of them, or you can check on one or more which you would like to render for the output type, we have multiple options, one is a still image, then we have panorama, we also have illuminance. And then we have stereo panorama, which is for those VR goggles. And I have a whole video on this, which I'm going to link up in the cards above and then also down in the description of this video, I'm just going to pick out the still image for this one. And then moving on to render quality, we have standard and final. This is really referring to all of the shadows, reflections and everything that kind of informs the realism of your renderings. Then we have the image size. This is referring referring to well, how pixelated the image is or is not. And now if you don't want to spend any flex tokens, you can go from small to medium to large. Uh, I'm just going to uh, stick with large because I don't want to spend any flex tokens because well, I don't have any as you can see. And then finally, for exposure, you can set this uh, to advanced or native depending on do you want to use uh, the existing kind of exposure presets or do you want to set everything up yourself. And once we have everything set up, we can just click on start rendering, the file has now been uploaded to the cloud and the rendering process has begun. Now this is done in the background. So you can continue working on your model while the project is being rendered. At any point, you can go to your render library by going to cloud rendering and then pick out 
render gallery. Here we can click on view project and uh, it's going to display all of the renderings that we have for this particular project. Now this is still rendering so at any point you can click on cancel rendering if you want to stop the rendering process. The next rendering type is going to be turntable. We can just click here to start the render settings for that. Now we have multiple presets for web or mobile however you can also go to custom and then you can customize your settings there and just have more flexibility. Here we can set up the width and height of the images. Be careful here because you don't want to make this too large because it's going to require some flex tokens. Also we have the options for frames so you can either have 6 or 36 six frames and then we also have the render quality which you can set to standard or final. And now with the settings completed we can start rendering and as soon as the rendering is done we're going to have our turntable. So as you can see this is basically a video of a turntable. Well we have a camera going around the house. So here we have these six frames so it's from six different angles and then you can either view it here in the cloud or you can download this turntable either as an HTML viewer, uh, download it as a video or as a zipped file. I'm just going to download this as a video and then I can take a look at it, I can edit it, I can send it to a client and so on. For the next rendering type we have the solar study. So I'm just going to click here to start a solar study from this particular rendering or camera view uh, and here we have some settings. So we have some basic image settings. We also need to set up the date of the solar study and then the time. So basically we're telling Revit when we would like the solar study to start uh, and then when we would like it to end. In this case we're starting at 8 a.m finishing at uh, 8 p.m. Uh, and then we're going to set the interval at one hour. So it's going to give us basically uh, a video of what this uh, building or interior will look like throughout the day. Uh, I'm just going to lower the uh, size of the image so I don't have to use any flex tokens and then I'm going to hit render. And when we go and open up our solar study, as you can see, it's just a video made out of multiple frames and we have basically renderings throughout the day giving us a kind of glimpse into what this interior would look like uh, throughout the day. And we can of course download this video if we want to use it. Moving forward, let's talk about post-processing. So I've picked up this uh, simple still image and here we can explore what are the options that we have. So the first one is simple, that's exposure value. You can just play around with that and figure out which exposure fits in the best with your rendering. Then we have some presets. You can pick one of these out, which one works best for you. Or we have the custom option where you can then customize the highlights, midtones, as well as shadows. Then we have the saturation, so how much the colors are saturated. We have an option for color preserving as well as color correction which allows you to modify the white point uh, so you can set that up. Uh, by default it's going to be 6500 and this is something that's usually going to work for most images. Then I'm just going to hit apply and what you're going to notice is that now it's going to start rendering so it's basically going to re-render this image to give you the effects of the post-processing that you required. Next let's do the panorama. So for panorama what you want to do is just pick out the image you want to use then we can open up the rendering settings and here for the environment you have multiple options. I'm just going to pick riverbank then for the render quality let's go with standard just because you don't want to use any of the flex tokens that you don't have and then we have the exposure let's just leave that at native and for the width uh, I'm just going to leave it with this setting and then let's click on render. And once the rendering is completed this is going to be the end result so we can basically look around. It gives us a really good insight in what it's going to feel like in the building itself. So I think this is really powerful especially for sharing it with clients that are not architects and can't really read floor plans. Very good. And moving forward we also have the luminance rendering and I'm just going to click on that and then we have the menu and in the menu we can set up the model 
uh, date and time, or we can just use the one from the view, which is what I'm going to pick. Then we have the uh, sky model, which we can set up and adjust uh, however we like. Uh, then we have the image size options. I'm just going to set it to or leave it at these values. Uh, and then we also have a legend. So for units, we can use either foot candles or lux. Uh, we have the minimum and maximum values, and we also have options for automatic and logarithmic, which we can both check on. And then we can just click on render. And once the rendering is completed, here we have that uh, Illumins rendering, we can follow the legend for Lux and then we can see the effect of sunlight uh, inside of the model and uh, how much lighting are we going to have in each part of the model and if we have to make some adjustments uh, to the model in order to improve the Illumins. And of course we can download this image as well. Uh, now once we have a lot of these renderings completed, what you'll notice is that it, we can easily toggle through still images, panoramas, illuminance, sun studies, turntables, and so on here in the render menu. So you can easily navigate to the rendering that you're looking for. And that's going to complete today's video. I hope you have enjoyed it. And if you want to get access to all of these Revit project files and renderings, all of my Revit project files are available on my Patreon page, and I'm going to link that up in the cards above and then also down in the description of this video. Thank you for watching guys make sure to check out my website balkanarctic.com for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.